Before starting work on a Weatherby Epsiren brick effect render system, a U value should be calculated for the existing property structure and a suitable insulation material and thickness selected to satisfy any design criteria and current building regulations. Pull out tests are also required. These measure the pull out strength of a fixing, assessing its suitability for the substrate, and ensures the correct loading design. Only then is it possible to determine the appropriate fixing type, length and number per square metre required. A Weatherby specification should always be sourced for further information on materials and application methods to be used. Copies of Weatherby detail drawings for the brick effect render system should also be obtained to ensure all details are correctly installed. Before applying external wall insulation directly to a masonry or rendered surface, brush down the substrate to remove any friable material, algae or lichen, and, where required, apply Weatherby's biocidal wash in preparation for the new works. Any full depth surface profile should be firmly attached and a suitable base rail installed at approximately 150 mm above ground level. Take care not to bridge the damp proof course. The base rail profile type is determined by the insulation thickness and should be installed at a maximum of 300 mm centres and 50 mm from each end, using approved Weatherby fixings. Where verge trims are required, these must be installed in accordance with the Weatherby specification, including a sealing tape and silicone sealant to ensure the system is protected. The verge trim must be cut and bent into place at the gable apex to prevent an exposed joint at this point. On low-rise applications, bedding adhesive is only required to level insulation boards on uneven substrates. However, it should always be used for fully bedding the boards on all high-rise applications. Bedding adhesive is applied in a continuous line around the perimeter of the board, with six additional dabs of adhesive distributed uniformly over the remaining surface. Alternatively, for fully bedded applications, the adhesive is applied over the entire face of the insulation board using a notched trowel. Start by placing the first insulation board on the base rail at a corner of the building, flush to the perpendicular wall. This should be secured with the approved Weatherby mechanical fixings determined by the pull-out test at a rate of 5 per board in accordance with the Weatherby fixing pattern included in the project specification. Continue to place additional boards ensuring a staggered laying pattern is adhered to with all boards interleaved at external corners. The protruding edge can easily be trimmed using a saw Additional fixings are required at 300mm centres at the external corners and around openings. All boards must be tightly butted together to eliminate thermal breaks, with door and window openings easily formed by shaping the insulation boards around the corners. Where window openings allow, to prevent cold bridging, a thinner insulation board can be used on window and door reveals and rendered to match the walls. Once the insulation boards have been fully installed, Weatherby scrim adhesive should be thoroughly mixed to a pliable consistency for three to five minutes. This should then be left to settle for approximately five minutes and remixed to break the set before use. Corner beads should be cut to length prior to applying the scrim adhesive and laid to one side. Apply the scrim adhesive over the insulation boards to a depth of four to six millimeters. Once all of the insulation is covered, a notched trowel should be run at a 45 degree angle through the base coat in preparation for the alkali resistant reinforcing mesh. The alkali resistant mesh should be bedded into the top third of the scrim adhesive, with the mesh kept taut and smoothed from the top down. Trowel over the adhesive to ensure the mesh is fully adhered. Adjacent layers of mesh should have a minimum overlap of 75 mm with no overlaps to be placed within 150 mm of any reveal or corner. Any offcuts should be resized to 200 by 200 mm patches and used as additional stress patches for corner reinforcements. These should be bedded in at 45 degrees to all window and door openings to prevent hairline cracking. Lightly embed the corner beads into the wet scrim adhesive at the building corners, window reveals and door reveals. 
Before the scrim adhesive sets, lightly scratch the surface with a scratch comb to provide a key for the finishing coat and allow the base coat to dry completely. The mortar coat is applied first. Add the mortar powder to the required amount of water and thoroughly mix to a uniform consistency using a clean, rust-free, low-speed mixer. Using a stainless steel trowel, apply the mortar coat to a thickness of 6 to 8 millimeters in a continuous motion, always working to a wet edge. A straight edge or derby can be used to help achieve a square edge at the corner of the building or around openings. A derby is also recommended to help smooth out any hollows and ridges. It is important not to over trowel or polish the surface. Once the mortar coat has tightened but not fully set, the brick faced top coat is ready to be applied. Mix the top coat in the same way as the mortar coat. Using a stainless steel trowel, Apply the coloured top coat evenly at a thickness of 4 to 6 millimetres. Any desired texture or stippling should be done immediately after top coat application. Depending on the finish required, a variety of techniques can be used to create traditional or rustic effects by using a stiff brush, comb, sponge, spatula or roller. Care should be taken to maintain an even, consistent pattern throughout the whole elevation. Shading can also be achieved by applying a dry brick effect render powder in a contrasting or blended shade to the freshly applied top coat layer using a dry paintbrush or roller. After the top coat has been shaded and textured, allow the applied materials to stiffen slightly before starting to cut through the face layer using a cutting tool. It is crucial this operation takes place at the right time in the setting process to enable a clean cut to be achieved. Too soon, and the spirit levels and guiding tools will mark and spoil the surface, and the cutter will rag and tear the material. However, if the render is left to set for too long, it will be too firm to cut into. Cutting through the face layer is a skilled job, and needs to be extremely precise to ensure a clean, professional finish. Mark out the height of each horizontal cut using a pre-cut template, and use a spirit level or guiding tools to ensure a straight edge is achieved. Cut out all of the horizontal grooves first, and then use a brick template or guide to evenly space the vertical cuts. Once all of the cutting has been completed, allow both coats of render to dry completely. Once fully set, lightly brush over the surface of the complete elevation using a soft brush to leave a clean surface. Be sure to clean off any material that may have accidentally splashed onto adjacent surfaces. Weatherby products can be very difficult to remove once set and contain pigments which may stain if left to dry. Apply Weatherby Evo Stick 25 year silicone sealant around openings, at system abutments, and to all areas required to ensure no water ingress occurs. Your Weatherby Brick Effect render system is complete. Weatherby, creating a greener future.